All right, guys. So we're going to go back into the Short Bears Excellency Vault. There's still, I must have done like five or six of them, and there's still, there's still a few more. And, uh, you know, it's all about studying the greats. You know, Short Bear studied the greats. Uh, that's why he has them on the Excellency Vault. So um, got to read it. Got to put, you know, if he's reading, if he's putting it out there, you got to read it. You know, very few people actually read it. As you see, there's only six comments and 17. I think he has like 70,000 subscribers or no, 70,000 followers. Um, and very few people actually read this stuff, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's very relevant. Got to read it. Got to just, you know, these these podcasts of me reading it helps me um, knock it out. You know what I mean? So, and I got to put it out there for others. And and I'm turning it into like audio, uh, audio, so like you can read it or listen to it, like an audio book. Like 1.5 speeds is my go-to number, 1.7 sometimes, and uh, helps you knock it out. Got some knowledge. Um, also want to make a couple announcements real quick. Uh, Friendly Bear Conference is going to be September 16th. There's also events on the 15th, and the 17th which makes it the whole weekend um but the main event is saturday um pre-sale tickets or early bird is you you have a, you have access to the events on friday and sunday which are going to be epic um it's it's selling man you know so there's a limited limited supply so make sure you get your tickets you know what i mean so like the website is conscious trading academy.com and there's an event uh, link and you click that and sign up and also like I posted on Twitter and it's in the show notes so remember there's a limited supply you know what I mean it's it's a uh, it's gonna be epic it's well organized top notch quality venue um yeah I'm not looking to make much money out of this if any if any just like break even uh but yeah it's just like it's a really cool event and I want to meet everybody. And um, you get to see my office. You get it. We got to talk for as long as whoever wants to talk, man. I'm up for to talk trading until until you know we get tired. <laughs> and on the 54th floor on Friday, and on Sunday at the the Athletic Club, which is one of the social clubs, uh, the the social club that I have a a membership at, and it's a nice venue to just hang out, man. You know. So and then of course Saturday we have the main event. At the Double Tree by Hilton, it's one of the Hilton hotels. It's like a conference room. It's really, really sick. Um, really awesome event. So make sure you get tickets for that. It's gonna, it's gonna sell out. And I'm announcing it way early. It's July 14th. The event is literally like two months later. And so yeah, make sure you get it. Anyway, let's knock this out. Uh, because the, these, these are kind of tedious. You know what I mean? It's not, <laughs> I've done a lot of these. I read all the ones first that I was uh that I knew about, like Michael Marcus, Richard Dennis. So the cool ones were done. The ones that I could, that everybody knows at Dakota. Now we got like the ones I don't I don't know. So like I'm I'm learning something brand new here. But anyways, let's go over this and knock it out. All right, David Tepper, 25% net of fees per year since 1993 by the Short Bear, May 1st, 2023. As a photo of David Tepper, nice photo. David Tepper is part of a small group of investors that managed to return more than 20% per year over a period of three decades. 10,000 invested in his fund in 1993 would be worth roughly 3.6 million by 2019. He now ranks at number 109 in the Bloomberg Billionaires Index with an estimated net worth of 16.2 billion while his fund manages 14 billion. It's just a regular upper middle class. I'm just a regular upper middle class guy who happens to be a billionaire, David Tepper. Appaloosa Management manages four investment vehicles. One, Palomino Fund. Two, Thoroughbred Fund, offshore and onshore. Number three, flagship fund, Appaloosa Investment. Palomino was ranked by Bloomberg Market as a top performing fund of any hedge fund manager, managing over $1 billion. Early life. David Tepper was born on September 11, 1957, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He obtained his bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Pittsburgh in 1978 and went on to earn his MBA from Carnegie Mellon University in 1982. 
While pursuing his studies, Tepper devised a method for trading options and enabled him to generate income and cover his expenses. Following his MBA in 1982, Tepper gained valuable experience working in the finance department at Republic Steel. This experience provided him with insights into purchasing dis distressed companies, which would prove to be beneficial in his future endeavors. In 1984, he was recruited by Keystone Mutual Group, Mu Keystone Mutual, to, rec to work as a credit analyst. In 1985, he joined Goldman Sachs, which is where David Tepper truly started to grow as an investor. Tepper joined the firm as a credit analyst when his firm when the firm was establishing its high yield group in New York City. He quickly climbed the ranks and became the head trader within six months. For the next eight years, he focused mainly on bankruptcies and special situations. Tepper played a crucial role in Goldman Sachs survival after the 1987 stock market crash. He purchased underlying bonds in financially distressed institutions that had been severely impacted by the crash. These bonds increased in value once the market recovered, and Tepper's actions are credited with contributing to the firm's success, the successful rebound. Despite his significant contributions, Tepper was not made a partner at Goldman Sachs. Tepper decides to leave Goldman Sachs in 1992 after being passed up on. Okay. Performance and strategy. Appaloosa Management LP opened in 1993 with $57 million in capital and delivered a 57% return on its assets within six months. The fund's worth steadily grew, reached $300 million in 1994 and $800 million in 1996. For the next 30, day, 30 years, David Tepper would continue to scale up in the fund at $20 billion to, to the, into 2014. Portfolio allocation. Nice chart right here. It looks like a painting. Um, Appaloosa maintains its core and depth trading, which will become apparent through the performance around crisis. Day to day, they manage a highly concentrated investment book. Five stocks make up more than 50% of the current investment book. Tepper's ex expertise in distressed debt paid off as Appaloosa made successful investments in companies such as Enron, WorldCom, Marconi Corp., and Williams Co., and more, profiting handsomely in the meantime. Very few people have gotten rich on their seventh best idea, but a lot of people have gotten rich with their best idea. Best performing bets. In 1999, Tepper bought back Russian bonds after the, the default in 1990, 1999 at $0.05 cents on the dollar. He made 61% on that trade, making back his previous losses, and even ended up positive on the Russian bond trade. In, 19, in, in 2008, he targeted major banks, Bank of America and Citigroup in particular, as rumors circulating that the banking BMS would be nationalized in early 2009, edged the stocks near into edged the stocks to near collapse. Hold on one second, let me check my mic. Yeah, we're good. Okay, Tepper was able to buy Bank of America preferred shares at just 12 cents on the dollar and Citigroup bonds at just 19 cents. At those, as those stocks rallied by the end of the 2009, Appaloosa rank, raked in billions. In addition to these investments, Appaloosa made a significant contribution to its success in 2009 by purchasing roughly a billion dollars worth of AIG's commercial mortgage-backed securities at a price of just $0.09 cents on the dollar. Known as the AIG Ace, these securities currently trade at approximately $0.93 cents and were a major coup for, for the firm. Dot-com bubble and 2008 financial crisis. During the dot-com bubble, and fund, the fund prospered as many crashed and burned. In 2001, the fund was up 67%, followed the next year by losing 25%. In 2003, the fund saw 100, a 149% returns for investors. Similar to the big bets he put on Goldman Sachs in 1987, Tepper profited by the tune of $7 billion when the U.S. government intervened in a survival of the banks in 2008 returning 132% to investors. Each time the fund was down 25% or more, the fund made back all the losses within six months. Two times out of three, Tepper followed with triple-digit gains. It's pretty sick. So let me read that again. Each time the fund was down 25% or more, the fund made back the losses within six months. Two times out of, out of the three, 
Tepper followed with triple digit gains. This guy has a relentless. You could just tell like that's the quality you gotta have. I I know some people like that too, man. They they're down and then like it makes them better and they just it just go they go ripping it. It's a killer. That's a killer right there. All right, so we have this saying: the worse things get, the better they get. When things are bad, they go up. David Tepper. Okay, has a really sick chart. Okay. Annualized total returns in 1993. All right. According to individual institutional investor, Appaloosa has returned money to his investors in almost each of the past 10 years as part of a longstanding policy of returning capital to maintain optimal returns. His approach has not been detrimental to Tepper's success. Furthermore, Tepper had a talent for recognizing when to take calculated risk. From 1993 to 2014, Appaloosa's annualized standard deviation was seven times more volatile than the HFRI index, three times more volatile than the S&P 500, and twice as volatile as Berkshire Hathaway's stock. Investing with David is like flying, with, it, with hours of boredom followed by bouts of sheer terror. Summary, David Tepper shines through as an independent thinker. In the, in the same manner, he was not fully accepted within Goldman Sachs culture. He made his mark within the top investors. He does not seem to be the most mathematical or special individual, but he truly shows what makes him one of the best when it counts. During crisis, when most shiver in fear, he's able to step up and show the conviction in his work. Even more impressive is his ability to wait within the crisis itself. Even when all the investment universe shows a good value proposition, David Tepper is able to step back and think clearly until he is able to buy one dollar for buy one dollar for a few cents. This company looks cheap, that company looks cheap, but the overall economy could be completely screwed up. Could completely screw it up. The key is to wait. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to do nothing. Look at that. Some the key is to wait. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to do nothing. I have a quote on my wall for the longest. I took it out, but it's called Patience is also a form of action by August Rodin. He's a, August Rodin was a sculptor. And he sculpt to do sculpting, you gotta like have patience because you see the overall picture. It's just coming little by little, one chip at a time. Sometimes in this case you just wait. Wait, waiting the hardest thing to do to do is to do nothing. Okay. I hope you have enjoyed this blog as much as I enjoyed writing it. David Tepper truly follows the pattern of the best performers, putting weight behind his conviction ideas and timing them right. Yep, let's see. Short Bear. 17 likes. How many comments? Six comments. Yeah, you know, this is how you know you're on the right track. When no one's looking at something, remember, trading is and everybody fails. 97% fail. What are the 3% doing? The 3% are reading short bear. All right, man. I'll see you guys later. Have a good weekend.